My name is Donna Fleming, I'm the Projects Manager for Edinburgh Council. I'm going to show you the range of telecare equipment that we have. The first device is called Community Alarm. This device plugs into the client's landline telephone and on it there's a pendant that the client presses to get the help that they need. There's a range of different pendants that we have depending on the client's range of mobility. This is called a pendant aid. So if the client is unable to press the pendant in a normal way, then this device acts um, in the same way. This device is called the big button. So again, if the client has got a limited range of movement, and this is a pendant, it's just that it comes in a different shape. This device is called an epilepsy monitor. It only detects tonic-clonic seizures. This this paddle goes between the person's on their bed, between the base of the bed and the mattress. And this is the paddle that detects the vibration that's associated with the tonic-clonic seizure. The device plugs into normal um, electric socket and this is the box that sits at the side of the person's bed. The sensitivity can be adjusted. It has a microphone because of some people's seizures they may make an audible uh, sound and it has a delay function in case the seizure is self-limiting, in which case you can let the individual sleep through the seizure okay, but if it goes on for longer than a minute or two, for example, then the device would activate. This device links to the community alarm through the client's landline, and there's a call monitoring centre based in Gorgie in Edinburgh, which would administer that, that particular call and give the client the help they need, for example, call an ambulance on their behalf or alert an on-site carer that the individual has had a seizure. This device is called a pill dispenser. At the time when the person is supposed to take their medication, it goes round clockwise and as you can see in here, there's an audible alarm and there's a flashing light if the individual is deaf. In order to switch it off, I hold it like I would hold a plate and I would tip the medication into my hand and take my, my, take my pills. This device has 28 carousels, so you can, if you're on one uh, medication a day, you'll get a month out of it. If you're on more than one medication, then you may get two or three weeks out of the device. It runs on battery and it locks and clicks. There's a lock at the back so that the individual doesn't have access to the medication. So it's a very useful prompt for somebody who is compliant with their medication but who's going to forget to take their tablets. This is called a fall detector. This device attaches to the client's belt, so when they fall over, the fall detector falls with them. This is for clients for whom they may not have a warning that they're going to fall over, for example, people with epilepsy or with Parkinson's, or for the elder with, with dementia who have very little spatial awareness or mobility. It also has a pendant in it, so that if the person needs help, they can still press the pendant to get the assistance that they require. Again, it links to the community alarm centre via the C phone through the alarm box. Um, this device also has what we call um, an intelligence system, which means it can detect if the person has stumbles or trips. So it, has, it detects the levels two and three falls as well as a fall to the ground where they would, they would need assistance. This is called a bed occupancy sensor. It detects if the person's got into bed safely, it detects if the person gets out of bed, and it detects if they've not returned to their bed safely. It's a mat that's waterproof, and it sits between the base of the person's bed and their mattress. It works on pressure. So when the person gets into bed, the pressure is adjusted, so this device knows that the person is in bed okay. The common example of, uh, for using this device is when a person gets out of bed at night, usually to go to the toilet. So we can put this onto a timer, so when the person gets out of bed, the device knows that. The timer then starts, so say for example we give the individual 20 minutes or half an hour to go to the toilet. If they're not back within that 20 minute period, this device knows that because the pressure hasn't been adjusted and it sends an alert again through to the C phone to the call centre in Gorgie 
So we know that that individual has not got back to bed safely. It may be because they're wandering at night, again, if the person has a cognitive impairment, it may be that they've fallen and not made their way back to bed, or it could be that they're just sitting up okay having a cup of cocoa. But either way, the call centre staff would know that that individual has not got back to bed and they would then follow the response protocol to action if the person needs help or not.